Hello everyone, welcome back to Unit 2 D13. Uh, we're going to be continuing our discussion of writing the equations of lines today. Uh, so again, the, the goals are very similar to what we've been doing in the past. We want to find the equation of a line given its graph and we want to take a look at applications of lines, like certain real life scenarios where uh, lines can be applied and used to analyze that scenario. All right, so just some quick review here. Uh, we've talked about the building blocks of lines before. So just to remind you that the equation of a line looks like this here, where we have y equals mx plus b, where m represents the slope of the line and b represents the, the y-intercept of the line. All right, so slope, if you recall, it measures the steepness of the line. So it essentially gives the line direction in terms of its rise and run. So when we go to find the slope of a line, we need to determine how much it goes up and how much it goes over, right? So it might go up or down, it might go left or right. Uh, so if we, if we have a graph, we can usually determine that by finding uh, two points on the graph and using that to determine rise or run, or we could calculate it using uh, points on a table uh, manually. All right, so uh, we'll talk about that in our first example. But it's just a quick review of the things that we've talked about now for the last two weeks. You should be pretty good at finding the slope of a line. All right, so let's take a look at our first example here. So this is a pretty typical problem uh, where we're given a, a graph of a, of a line and our job is to find the equation of that line. Okay, so we wanna find the equation. And uh, so we're gonna start with finding the, the most important piece of information about a line, which is in fact the slope. Okay, so I'm gonna get my pen here and to find the slope, I'm just gonna locate two points that are on the line. And I already have those marked here for you. So I've got these two points. I'm gonna use these two points on the line to find the slope. Now, just remember that you can pick any two points on the line that you want. You're gonna get the same slope no matter what two points you pick. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw in this thing called a slope triangle. Okay, so I'm gonna connect these two points by only traveling left or right or up or down. I'm not gonna travel diagonally along the line. Okay, so I'm gonna draw in a slope triangle. So I'm gonna to travel to the right, and then I'm gonna go up. And you see this triangle that is formed. They call this a slope triangle, all right? And the legs of the triangle here represent your rise and your run. Remember, rise is how far you go up or down, so that would be this leg of the triangle. And our run is the left or right movement and that would be this leg of the triangle here. So I'm just gonna count over. So if I'm going from this point to this point, I go to the right, one, two, three, four. So I can put a four here. And then to go from this point to this point, I'm gonna go up one, two, three, four. So I'll put a four there. And those are both gonna be positive, reason being is because I went right and up. If I had gone left, that would have been a negative four. If I had gone down, it would have been a negative four. Okay, so left and down, those are negative movements. Right and up, those are positive movements. So if I'm gonna write the slope of my line, right? Remember, it's always rise over run. All right, so I'm gonna write it just like this as a fraction. So the rise was four. So there's my four for the rise and my run was also four. And you might know something about fractions. Uh, four divided by four is one, okay? And I don't care how you write your slope. You can write it like this, or you can write it like this. Uh, four over four or one, they're both equivalent and they both state the slope of your line, okay? So the next thing I gotta find is the y-intercept. That's the second piece of information that I need here. So the y-intercept represents the location where your line crosses the y-axis. So our y-axis is this guy right here. It is this vertical line that cuts our graph in half. So this is the y-axis and we're looking for where the yellow line crosses over the y-axis and we see that happen right here at this point, okay? So this point right here is the y-intercept, okay? And it has a location, so it's gonna be written as a point. So we need a set of parentheses and we need an xy coordinate separated with a comma. Okay, so for this point, the x coordinate is going to be zero and the y coordinate is at negative 
one. Okay, so this is the y-intercept here. Now the b-value, right, so what we say, or what we call the b-value is the y-coordinate of that point. Okay, so the b is negative one. Okay, so now I'm gonna write my equation. Remember, the equations of lines take the form y equals mx plus b. Okay, and I need to fill in the m and the b values which we just found. We just found m, which is our slope, and we just found b, which is our y intercept. So I'm going to fill those things in. So y equals our slope we found to be 1. So I'll put a 1x plus, and then my b value is negative 1. So I'll say plus negative 1. Okay, now I can simplify that a little bit. So I can say y equals 1x minus 1, right? Because adding a negative is the same thing as subtracting. And that would finish the equation of my line. This is the equation that I'm looking for. All right, guys, let's move on to another problem here. Um, we're going to be talking about applications. So I, I restate this table here for you. You've seen this in previous notes, but it's just a, a collection of examples and uh, the, the information that we've summarized in previous lessons about how slope presents itself in, a, in an application or a real life scenario. It usually represents some type of growth or rate of change. Okay, uh, so for example, they might be talking about a plant, right? If they're talking about a plant, they're probably talking about how that plant grows. So it might grow three inches per day or five feet per week or something like that. But that word per is a big clue, right? We're looking for that word per because that is describing something. It's describing how much it grows per uh, some period of time, right? Some length, some time, inches, days. All right, and then we can state that as a slope by saying three inches over one day, which gives us a numerical slope of just three over one. Okay, so in math, we'd like to kind of strip away that applied stuff and eventually just get to a raw number that we can use. Um, but we don't want to we don't want to forget where it came from. All right, so another example might be the bank account problem uh, where we have a bank account, we're saving so much money. Uh, one thing that we like to know is how much money uh, it, that bank account is growing by every week or every month or every year, whatever. So in this example, it's growing $8 every three weeks, right? So you might not get the word per, but you'll get some description of how fast your bank account is growing. That is a description of your slope, okay? The y-intercept is usually an initial value or a starting point for your story. Okay, so whatever the scenario is, there's usually a starting point that is described for you. Okay, so if they're talking about the plant, right, they're probably talking about how tall the plant was when you bought it or when you planted it or something like that, right? So in this one it says your plant is planted in the ground at a height of five inches. So the plant starts at five inches and then grows three inches every day. All right, so this is the starting point. So we would have a y-intercept of 0, 0,5, which means our b-value is in fact 5. If we were talking about the bank account problem, right, they would, it would be something like, what did your bank account start off with? How much money did you initially deposit into the bank account? All right, so you'll see that word initially, right? Uh, or you'll see at the beginning or on day 0, something like that to indicate that they're giving you a starting point. All right. So let's look at our problem down here. Okay, so it says you are a TikTok star and have just posted a new awesome video of a dance that you created. That's awesome. All right, you are also an accomplished mathematician, which is even more awesome, and recorded some data below in your table. Okay, so you recorded this data. Uh, you probably watch the number of views that you get on your TikTok videos, and you notice that on uh, one day after you posted, you had 113 views. On the second day, you had 119, and then you had on the third day, you were up to 125. Uh, so maybe we start by completing this table. If you notice, there's a pattern that is going on here, right? So if I go from 113 to 119, that adds six views going from day one to day two. If I go from day two to day three, I notice that I add another 
six views there. So it looks like my pattern is that I'm going to add six views every single day. All right, so if I go 125 plus six, I'll have 131 views on day four. And if I add another six, I'll have 137 views on day five. Now I want to go back here because one of the important pieces of information that we need is our initial value, right? What did, how many views did we start with on the day that we uploaded the video? So for this one, I have to go backwards. I'm not going forwards anymore. So I'm going to go backwards and I have to do the opposite of adding six here. So I got to subtract six to go backwards. So if I do 113 minus six, I'll be at 107 views. So on that very first day that you upload the TikTok video, it's new and everyone wants to watch it. So you get 107 people right away that watches it on the day that you upload it. And then after that, you're adding about six views per day. All right, and that's the first question that we need to answer. How many views are you getting per day? Six. All right, so we'd say six views over one day. Right, six views per day. So you can imagine what we're describing here, right? This is our slope. Okay. And then it says, how many views did you get on the day you uploaded the video? So this is the starting point, right? This is the initial amount of views that we got on day zero when we uploaded the video. And according to our table here, we had 107 views. This is our B value. Okay, so this is that initial value that we're looking for that we will need when we go to write our equation for this thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and write our equation. It says, what is the equation that represents the increase in views of your TikTok video? And what I like to do is I like to start by writing the blueprint for my line, since y equals mx plus b, and then I fill in the blanks, right, being m and b. So m is six, so I'm gonna say six x right or if you want you can put six over one it doesn't matter and then plus b b being 107 there's my equation right really that simple you just have to find those two pieces of information however they give it to you whether they give it to you in a table or with a verbal description of those two pieces of information you've got to find the slope and the y-intercept all right, now the last thing, it wants us to make a prediction. So if I were to fast forward 50 days into the future, could we figure out how many views we're gonna have after 50 days? Assuming that we get six more views per day, we sure can. Uh, so 50 days, right? This piece of information that they're giving us here is an X value, right? Because if I go back up to my table and I look, it says the number of days since you uploaded the TikTok video, that's being represented by the variable X. And we can see the days up here, zero days, one day, two day, three days, four days, five days. Uh, so so forth and so on. I don't want to continue this table all the way to day 50. That would just be too much work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 50 since it's an X value and I'm going to plug it into my equation like an input output. So I'm going to say Y equals and I'm going to say 6 times 50 plus 107. This is why we build the equation so that we can make these predictions really quick. Okay. Now remember what Y represents. Go back up to your table and look at what Y represents. Y represents the number of views, and that's exactly what they wanna know is how many views. So once I do this calculation right here, I'm gonna know what Y is. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So six times 50 is 300 plus 107. So I can say Y equals, and then 300 plus 107 is 407 views, all right? So after 50 days, I would get 407 views. That's a lot of views, I think. I don't know, I, I have never posted on TikTok, so that would be a lot of views for me for sure. All right, so here we go. Uh, now the last thing we wanna do is just get a graph of this line so we know what it looks like. And to do that, we can, we can pick any two points that are on this table. I'm gonna go ahead and plot them all since I've got them all here. But when you get on my open math, you only need two of the points to make your line work. All right, so we start with uh, 0 and 107. So we're going to start there. So I'm going to go down here. Here's 0 and 107, right? So if this is 1, this is 0, even though they don't have it marked. And we can see 107 on the Y scale. All right, so then we go one day, we go up six views, right? So after one, it'll be at 113. Then I go over another day, it's going to go up another six views to 119. And then we'll go over and up, and we're going to go up to... Uh, 125 here 
and then we'll go over one more up to 131. Okay. And then we would draw a line through those points, which I'm, I'll try, I'll try. I suck with this pen, but I'll give it a whirl. <laughs> you see how bad this is, guys? Feel free to laugh all you want. <laughs> but this is the struggle. If we were in person, this would be a perfectly straight line because Mr. Weldon's that awesome. But on this tablet, I am no match for this technology. So I cannot get you a straight line there. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I uh, hope that helped out. Give the practice problems a try. And let me know if you have questions in the Zoom chat. Have a great day.